Nothing special. Yeah, pure delicious. Pure deliciousness, man. My name is uh, Banky, man. Everybody calls me Banky. That's the name that I got from my grandmother when I was young. I'm coming out here after 30 years. Yeah, I ain't got nothing, but I'm going to have something because I'm rich in personality. You know, and uh, I'm rich in love. My family love me, and that really, that's, that's really the, all that counts. Shout out to everybody out there on Team Banky Pam, man. I appreciate the love. Appreciate the support. Boom, boom. We out here. 33 years of prison stores. 33, y'all. We out here. We rolling. We rolling. Oh, uh, I see y'all got on me when I told the last story. When I told y'all about uh, <laughs> old dude that uh, used to, you know, had all that lasny, flim flammery, skull duggery. You know, uh, Tom Foolery with him, and I told y'all I'd tell y'all that story. So y'all have asked me a couple of times in the uh, comments, so I wanted to try to oblige you. Um, uh, I'm not, as again, I'm not sure what I put in the title, but I'm quite sure I'm thinking about putting his name in it. But this is nickname, so only people who really know this nickname is the penitentiary, so you know. Uh, <laughs> but everything I'm saying is actual and factual. You know, but uh, I don't like to to paint nobody no bad light. But anybody who knows this cat knows what I'm saying is uh, definitely true. But um, the dude I'm talking about, man, we called him in the penitentiary, man. We called him Cracker Red. <laughs> yeah, now don't ask me how he got that name, but that's the name that I always knew him by, Cracker Red. Cracker Red was a light-skinned, small frame, older dude. He was older than me. You know what I'm saying? Um, uh, Cracker Red probably weighed about a hundred and man, maybe a hundred and fifty pounds, soaking wet. He wanted he give you that uh, that old school uh, 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 think they a pimp type vibe with all that. You know what's up, Jack? You know all of that. He give you that. He give you that whole vibe right there, right? Um. Cole, Cole Bama, <laughs> Cole Bama, you know what I'm saying, but you can't tell him that in his mind, he's just a player, you know what I'm saying, but in actuality though, you know, like I say, when you, when, and I know that's kind of, you know, hard for people to separate when I tell y'all these people and I tell y'all certain things about them when I tell y'all that, you know, most of the dudes that I've met over the years, man, if you really get to know them, you know, and separate them from their actions and what they doing, you know, they're not really bad people, you know what I'm saying? When you talk to them and you personalize them and you get to know them, they're not really bad people, man, you know what I'm saying? That's what I found anyway, you know. But, um, and Cracker Red, he about the same, you know what I'm saying? He the same way. He just can't shake that loss in him, man. He cannot shake it. It's on him. It's in him. Um, He can't shake it, you know what I'm saying? He going to come with some type of flim flammery some skull duggery, some lasting with them, no matter what, if you coming straight across the board with him, and you dealing with him on a regular basis, he's still going to put some, you know, some stink in the game, you know what I'm saying, he going to put some stink in the game, man, you know, oh man, let me, uh, uh, uh let me get, uh, let me get a couple of bags of chips, man, to a store day, Cracker Red, you got this money, man, come on, man, come on, man, come on, you know I ain't gonna play with you like that, man, come on, man, Come on, man. Let me, let me, man. let me get that. You know what I'm saying? All right, now. I'm telling you now. You know. Get to them. Stow they come. Uh, what at it? Man. Man, these people to mess my money up, man. You know I got you, though, man. Come on. Man, it ain't number two dollars, man. You ain't tripping over no two dollars. Come on, player. You ain't tripping over no that type of loss. You know what I'm saying? Which when he knew when he got it. He had no, you know what I'm saying, he had no income to take care of. See what I'm saying? But what he would do, a lot of times, you know what I'm saying, he 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 would put himself in these positions for one or two things. He would put himself in this position because he liked to get high. You know what I'm saying? He liked to get high. He would not deny that himself. He liked to get high. And um, that's been his biggest downfall. And also, too. He 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 had this thing for this this these peoples, man. This 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 this, uh, this boy named D. For as long as I known Cracker Red, and I've been on different compounds with Cracker Red, and it seems like every compound that I've been on with him, he end up on that compound 
with D as well. You know what I'm saying? Him and D had this type of bond or whatever. You know, they they you know what I'm saying? They always together. But D was like a, 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 in, a Indian. I think D was Indian. It was a, like a, a Indian. You know, like a real Indian um, heritage or whatnot. And um. But they was they was gay. They was homosexual. You know, when I first seen D D had long hair before they made you cut the hair. D had long hair all the way down to the back of their thighs. You know what I'm saying? And um, Cracker Red man, <laughs> Cracker Red was uh, Cracker Red was uh, crazy about the people, man. You know they 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 was inseparable. But D had that lasting and that flim flammery with them as well. You know what I'm saying? That's probably why they connected so much. Because D would be with Cracker Red all the time, knowing that Cracker Red really ain't got nothing, but he'll go out and try to get some, you know, even at the detriment to his own health. You know what I'm saying? He'll go try to get some. But, and D had a lot of, like, skills. D can make make things, like, you know, I remember when the, uh, the um, MP3 players came out, when they was transitioning us from CD players to MP3 players. So... You know how you see these people out here now that walk around? I got one in here somewhere. And D actually the one who made it. I bought I bought it from D. But you know how you see these people walk around and they got like their Walkman or their phone or whatever it is with their phone. I know Walkman. And you know what I'm saying? I'm really going back. But you know how they got their, like their phone on their hip and they got that little clip to go on there? D was making clips like that for the, uh, for the uh, MP3 player. You know, and, and putting uh, football logos on them, and uh, or, or, or people' favorite basketball teams or something. Man, it, it, it was it'd be some ingenious stuff. When you see it, you'll be like, man, you can't believe somebody made this in prison, and they made it out of like newspaper clippings and cardboard, and what, and it would be legit. It'd be hard. It'd be you know what I'm saying. It'd be durable and sturdy, and you can clip it on your belt clip. And put your CD player in there, and it, it, it will work. You know what I'm saying? So they did things like that, and did like arts and designs and stuff, like made, you know, stuff out of uh, um, what you call them things, matchsticks. And I mean, they had they had they had some talent, you know, that they could make things and do things. They sold up stuff for people, um, you know, made people shorts, cut your uh, sweatpants off and turn them into shorts. With, where they look professional, where the people won't try to take them from you because it's contraband, um, all types of stuff like that. So both of them hustled, you know what I'm saying? And they hustled because they needed to hustle because both of them like to get high. You see what I'm saying? So Cracker Red being that he's supposed to be, you know, quote unquote, the man in this type of relationship, you know, he he going to be the one to go out there on the front line sometime and borrow stuff and try to get stuff. And, you know, they ain't got nothing to eat that night. They ain't got no meal. I told y'all, late night meal in prison, man, is mandatory, you know. And when I tell y'all late night, I don't mean like eating real late at night, but it, it just anything after 5 o'clock, you ain't eating no more. Because if you ain't, if all you got is the kitchen, that's it. So you late night is anything after 5, if you want something to eat, you're going to have to have it on your own. Because the state is most definitely not going to provide it for you. So, you know, to have something to eat late at night, man, it's, 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 it's almost mandatory in there, man. Or your stomach end up touching your back. You be starving up in that joint. So they may not have nothing to eat. And Cracker Red going to go buy stuff. Now, most people in prison know Cracker Red. They know he got that lostness with him, that flim flammery. Dudes ain't going to really give him nothing. Let's he talk a good game. Man, any type of money he can get, the only type of money he gonna get, to the best of my knowledge, he had no support from the street. And you know, by the way he lived his life, is probably because he probably burnt his bridges or whatever. But at the same time, the only type of money he gonna get is having a state job. He get a house main job or whatever. But I'm telling you, a regular job like that is gonna pay you only uh, twenty seven dollars, twenty seven dollars a month. You know what I'm saying? So. That ain't enough to feed one person, let alone two people, you know. So, um, yeah, and um, he couldn't even keep one of them long because he going to end up getting the charge, you know what I'm saying? He going to do something to try to hustle, be it he try to make some wine, get caught with the wine, get a charge, get locked up, come back out, or be it he, um, you know, uh, uh, get, get owe somebody some money and then somebody had to touch him up, bang, bang, you know, he go to jail, you know what I'm saying, come back out, or... Uh, you know, he, he going to try something, you know what I'm saying, to, to, to get his hustle on. 
You know what I'm saying? Or either he get a job. He gonna be trying to steal some out of the chemical closet to sell it. Uh, steal some chemicals and try to sell it to somebody. He gonna always do something. They got that lasting in. You know what I'm saying? It's like he can't get it up out of. You know. Now even on top of that though, but he gonna talk. And then especially, you know, you gotta realize you got a lot of young dudes coming in. You got these gang members coming in. You got these new dudes coming in. They in their twenties, nineteen, twenty, twenty-two, twenty. Man, we done been in the penitentiary longer than they been on this earth. You see what I'm saying? So when they come in and they see a dude like Cracker Red been locked up so long, he 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 definitely was locked up longer than me before I got there. So right now I'm assuming he's still locked up. I don't know for sure. So he 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 well into working on 40, 40 something plus years. So when you see dudes and they come into prison like that, even if they're in the games or whatever, and they see an old head like that and the way he moving and the way he talk and the way he act, even though he's small, they got to assume and give him some type of respect as to, you know, that he might be dangerous, you know what I'm saying? Because he's still alive, you know what I'm saying? And wants to do them been in there for a few minutes and see what's going on in there and see how it's moving in there and see what's going on. And to see a dude that's been locked up 20, 30, 40 years and he moving around, he coherent, he seemingly healthy. And, you know, you got to assume that he knows something, you know what I'm saying? If nothing else, how to survive. So they going to give him a certain level of respect. And then when Cracker Red, he got the meanest grit and the, you know, talk game you ever want to hear. Man, man, you better, man, I, okay, yeah, you might whoop me, yeah, you see how small I am, you might whoop me, <laughs> but I'm going to cut your throat, I bet I cut your throat, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to catch you when you sleeping, I'm going to catch you when you over there playing cards, I'm going to catch you when you going to the microwave, and I'm, you turn around, I'm going I'm to plunge that thumb right in your chest, yeah, so go ahead, smack me, go ahead, smack me, go ahead, do that, that's what I'm going to do, yeah, I'm letting you know, that's what, oh, you threatening, yeah, yeah, go ahead, whoop me, I, I, I'm going to fight back. But you might get out on me. Yeah, I'm little. I'm little. But I'm going to catch you. I bet I catch you. Yeah, all y'all like to use the phone. All y'all like to play cards. All y'all like to get over there, bang on the table, you little young boys, and rap. I'm going to come right up behind you. And I'm going to eat you. Yeah, and he put that psychology, he put that psychology in their head and they make them, give them something to think about. You know what I'm saying? Give them something. To, uh, yeah, this old head here kind of crazy. But... In actuality, dudes that's come that, that's of my era that no cracker, he ain't gonna do nothing. <laughs> he ain't gonna do nothing. He ain't gonna bust a great man, but he would talk enough to scare a gorilla. You know what I'm saying? And, and and that's his talk game. You know what I'm saying? And he a pump fake. I done seen a pump fake so many times, man. It don't even make no sense. And what I mean by pump fake is he'll he'll put his hand in his pants and act like he got something and come out there and get the pacing and you know because somebody done screamed on him or somebody done, done, done talk loud to D or or, or say something to him and he pacing around out there with his hands in his pants like. You know, like he getting ready to put some work in. So you got dudes in there that, you know, you make moves like that, man. Somebody in there think you can do something. So everybody got to be pay attention because don't nobody know who's who and, what, and, and where the beef at. So when them young dudes see that type of stuff, then they they, they own, you know, oh, okay, this, you know, it, 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 he creates a persona that he dangerous. You know what I'm saying? And he give you the verbal, you know, assault like he dangerous. But, man, he harmful as a butterfly, man. <laughs> Crack a red home for little butterfly, man. Well, you know, if you don't know, and it's going to work on you, because I done seen them see plenty of young dudes up. Plenty of them, yeah. I mean, what you saying? You know, and he always, always, man, he, man, he stay, you know, scrambling. He stay on the hustle. He stay on the grind where he ain't got nothing. So he always trying to get something. So he might come, man, this man, this one of the things that irked me about him. This this joker might be at the microwave line, might be four, five, six, ten, twelve, whatever, deep line, waiting for to go in the microwave. Hey, he come all the time, man. He got a coffee habit too. A lot of guys in prison got a serious, serious coffee habit, man. I mean, serious, man, where they, they will kill for coffee, man. You understand me? I'm gonna say that again so y'all understand. They will kill for coffee. That is no joke. That is no pun intended. They will kill for coffee, my dude. That's how much they own that coffee and it gives them some type of psychological like this really calming them. It's really making them at ease. It, it, they they believe that. When they don't got it, they got headaches and they down and they depressed. Them. They will hurt you over that coffee. Cracker Red got a coffee habit. So what Cracker Red will do is at any given time, the line four, five deep, he's standing out there gritting. 
He trying to get in line, man. Come out there with pimping. Got that old pimp walk to him. Man, all them people in line for microwave. Shh, man. I ain't got nothing but a little cup of coffee. Then this man would have a whole coffee cup with this much coffee in it. This much coffee in it, and he trying to put that in the microwave, so he want to cut the line. He want to ask it, man, let me get in here for a second. It don't take me no more 30 seconds. I just need to heat this up. Man, you got to get in line like everybody else, man. You slowing the process up. I'm slowing the process up. It ain't number 30 seconds. Man, y'all, man, y'all got to be tripping, man. Y'all be tripping. And he pimping all the way, acting like he mad, like he getting ready to do something to somebody because he can't get in the microwave for 30 seconds with this tiny bit of coffee. Man, if you don't go sit down somewhere, but this is him. He do every day he do this. Every day he'll bust that door and come out there, walk to the microwave. How many people in line, man? Let me jump in there with you, man. I don't need, I don't need nothing but the heat up, just to heat it up. You know what I'm saying? It, it, it's crazy, man. But huh, this penitentiary, yeah, this penitentiary, man. So it goes on, man. That's how it happens, you know. And um, you know, like I say, I done seen them shake some dudes up. I done seen dudes call this bluff. You know what I'm saying? I done seen both. You know, um, all the way from I known them for years and years. And then when I was in um, not away, when I was you know, where I eventually made parole from, he was, he was in the block with me, you know what I'm saying? So he was in the block with me, and I, and I was surprised he's still doing the same thing. D in the block with him as well, you know what I'm saying? They doing the same thing. Now, see, D will put him in a lot of awkward situations as well, too, because D got a smart mouth. and going to run their mouth, and somebody be ready to haul off and, you know, put hands on them, and then... Crack a red head, he come like, man, you ain't, no, man, you can't, no, you can't put your hands on the people, man, you could have came to me, you come to me, man, you, you, I'm gonna scrape them whatever problem they got, you know, and deal do that same stuff too, a ball money and can't pay that money and somebody ready to hurt him, that I don't care nothing about, you know what I'm saying, what he, what he do behind closed doors, they want their money. You know what I'm saying? And here come Cracker Red. Tell me, um, hey, look, let me holler at you, man. What, what, what they owe you? What they owe you? Like you got it. You know what I'm saying? You ain't got it. You know what I'm saying? No matter what. And, you know, and dudes, no, man, no. You know, and he he ready to go on the front line, but he, he ain't going to follow through. He's just going to pump fake and pump fake and put a, try to put enough, you know, uh, fear in you that he going to really do something. But when it come down to it, he ain't going to do nothing. He ain't gonna do nothing. He not. He not. He not built like that. It's just certain people. They not built like that. When that danger come and that violence come, that they gonna they gonna just step up. Nah, a lot of dudes is not built like that. They gonna they gonna get on out the way. You know what I'm saying? And I don't um I don't look at those dudes no funny for that. You know what I'm saying? I'm different. I don't look at dudes no funny for that because I know you know nobody wants to get hurt. Not even the dudes that ain't scared to go out there and, and, and put that work in. They still they putting that work in for that simple fact that they don't want to get hurt. So they were trying to do it to you for you do it to them. But then you got other people who got a, a whole another different philosophy. Like I ain't trying to get hurt at, under, under no circumstance. You know what I'm saying? So it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? And Cracker Red he fall up under that umbrella. But you can't tell it by the way he talk, you know what I'm saying? And then D, like I say, D never do come on the compound and he getting money. And what I mean by getting money, he probably getting that package in and, you know, them drugs or something like that. That's that's getting money in the penitentiary because they getting money off of that. You know what I'm saying? Them before I left, is tobacco. So it ain't even really like, you know, no super felony or nothing. So then they making big money. So if they come on there and they getting money, and they mess with, you know, if they in that type of lifestyle, then D gonna try to get up under them and try to woo woo woo. And if they like D, then next thing you know, D off messing with them and Cracker Red just playing the sideline. Like, you know, now he just the best friend. You know what I'm saying? So, and, and for real, for real, D was carrying Cracker Red to the 10th power. You know what I'm saying? Carrying Cracker Red because Cracker Red emotionally caught up. But if any better uh, options come along, disinterested in DD will leave and go with them even if he's moving out of the block and Cracker Red ain't gonna do nothing but find a way to move out the block and go right behind him <laughs> and go right behind him you know what I'm saying so yeah that that was the dynamics of their relationship you know what I'm saying but you know it, it, either one of them was in trouble with some money or in some money or in debt or some or, or either the other one and that's how it always went 
You know what I'm saying? So I ain't never really got to the point where I seen like D ready to step up and uh, help crack a red. Maybe once or twice, I think I did. You know, like like, like it was a little standoff because Cracker Red done talk so much stuff and scared one of them little young boys and they acting like they getting ready to, uh, you know, mob up and get at them, you know what I'm saying, and hurt them and D out there acting like they got the Bethlehem and Cracker Red acting like he got the Bethlehem and they acting like, yeah, y'all little young punks come on with it, you know what I'm saying, we got something for y'all and, and that'll shake them young dudes up because like I said, they young, they ain't really about that violence, they ain't seeing that violence, all the violence they know is on the street popping them pistols from 20, 30, 40 feet away. It's a different ball game in the penitentiary, man. You got to get up close and personal and if you get too close and don't know what you're doing, hey, hey, you know, the next thing you know, you, you, you're super late, you know what I'm saying? So it takes a lot, man, to try to, uh, to run up into that type of uh, battle, man. To, to, to pick that type of war for yourself, man. You have to have that mental fortitude and, and uh, war, war, war ready in you to, uh, you know, to take on them type of tasks, man. And it ain't good for nobody. I can tell you that right now, period. It, it ain't no good for nobody. But, um, yeah, so I just seen a couple of them situations, but I could even remember, man, like I said, all the way back then, man, this is all in the late 2000s and stuff, man. I'm ready to get out of the penitentiary and crack a red, seemingly supposed to be trying to get out of the penitentiary. And what did he do? You know what I'm saying? He going up for parole every year like every other old head. But what did crack a red do? Oh, I man, they going to give it to me. And I ain't going to lie, and I know this may sound bad to say, but to me it seemed like crack a red wouldn't even took it. He wouldn't even want to leave because if he couldn't go with him. You know what I'm saying? But he used to act like he was so interested in parole. But it seemed like every time he got ready to go off for of parole, it seemed like he self-sabotaged himself. Every time, man, he get ready to go off for of parole, what'd he do? He take he, he get a dirty urine. You know what I'm saying? He test positive for drugs. You know, knowing that the people gonna piss test him every week or every other week because he done caught dirty so many times. When you catch a dirty urine in prison, you catch a dirty urine one time. Every time that unit come around to piss, which it might be once a week, once every two weeks, every time they come to piss, they got a hot list. You're going to be on the hot list. So you're going to get pissed every time that they piss people if you ever got a dirty unit. So he know he's going to get pissed. So if you know you're going to get pissed, why would you smoke? Why would you use drugs? You see what I'm saying? So they always test him and he know he's going to get tested, but he get dirty unit when he's going up for parole, when he waiting on the house. You know what I'm saying? I know he got that one year. Then, um... I remember the next year, another year I was on there with him, he um he he caught another charge for something. Oh, making wine. He had wine and he said he got caught with the wine. Why are you going up for parole? So to me, from the outside looking in, I can't say for sure, but from the outside looking in, it looked like he was either scared to go on the street, which you do have people that scared to go on the street, or either he was self-sabotaging himself for whatever reason. Because every time he went up, he he always ended up in a situation. When you going up for parole, that's supposed to be the cleanest time you doing. You're supposed to be trying to stay out of all trouble, ducking all the hooks, everything when you get ready to go up for parole and, and you know, because they're gonna be looking into everything that's going on with you. What done went on with you over the past twelve months, twenty four months, so on and so forth. So you getting charges and getting dirty yours and what do you think the people gonna let you out on the street if you if you got drug problems? And then he lied, man. I'ma tell you he is a vicious vicious liar man he is a vicious liar man i remember one year too he had the rumor going around telling everybody that he made parole everybody oh yeah i made it man you know i made it yeah they're gonna put me in um they're gonna they're gonna they're, they're, they're supposed to be letting me out right now right they're trying to find a um they're trying to find a drug rehab they're gonna they're gonna, they're gonna parole me to to a halfway house where i gotta take this drug program but then i'm free you know what I'm saying? I'm straight. Yeah, I made it. So everybody going around congratulating him on making parole. Oh, man, crack a red baby. Whoa, 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 whoa. He lying. <laughs> he straight lying. He using that too to go ask people, oh, man, let me get this, man. Look out for me. You know I'm going to go home. You know what I'm saying? God dang, man, I'm going to look out for you. You know what I'm saying? You know what? Because dudes be thinking when dudes give it go on the street, they're going to do something for them. Especially because they're free. And they've been in here. They've been in the struggle. They know the life. They know the day-to-day, -day, you know what I'm saying, you know, struggle that dudes go through. So you, if you cool with somebody, you assume, man, he get out on the street, it's better for him, man. He gon', you know, he gonna give you that, that boost, man, you need. You got somebody in there you can call. You got somebody to tell you, you know, what the transition like. You got somebody to tell you how how good it's out there to motivate you to want to, you know, it's, it's a whole thing. 
So he was shooting that line to everybody, man, look out for me, man. But all the time, he lying. He ain't even make parole. He ain't even make it. You know what I'm saying? And he went on with this life for about five, six, seven months. Dude was like, man, why you ain't gone yet? Dudes used to get moved as soon as they make parole within 72 hours. Why you ain't gone? Man, you know, they trying to find me on a halfway house. Yeah, but I made it, though. Yeah, I definitely made it. You know what I'm saying? And, um, yeah, then that was exposed and came out. Oh, man, then he turned around and catch a dirty urine. So now he used that as a excuse. Oh, I caught the dirty urine, man. They took the paper back, man. They took the parole back. Man, cut it out, man. You cut it out. You know what I'm saying? But this the flam flammery. This called duggery, man, that he come with. He can't shake that up out of. You know what I'm saying? And, um. One of the last incidents I and it's a lot of cracker reds in prison, trust me, he is not exclusive. You know what I'm saying? But I remember the, one of the last incidents that I remember he was in, he he borrowed some money from um from this dude, man, this dude named Outlaw. And um he borrowed the money from Outlaw. And him and Outlaw used to be super cool. I mean, but Outlaw younger than him, you know what I'm saying, and um way younger than him. So Outlaw used to even call him Pops. You know, like that was his pops, you know what I'm saying? So he got in some type of debt where he owed Outlaw, and Outlaw, you know, end up having to foot the bill and pay the debt because Cracker Red ain't paid. So he he turned around and punched Outlaw in the mouth. I mean, punch out Cracker Red in the mouth. Pop! So Cracker Red walking around with a busted lip and everything, and he would always be the first one to tell you, put your hands on me. I, I'm going to stab I'm gonna stab you to death. You know what I'm saying? He ain't did that yet, you know what I'm saying? But... He would tell you that, and you know what I'm saying, it's up to you what you're going to believe it or not. You know what I'm saying? But Outlaw punched him in the mouth, so he walking around there with a big old swole lip and everything. He coming all outside with a, 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 a washcloth with ice in it all up to his mouth. Talking, about, yeah, man, you know, you know, I ain't mad. I, I deserved it, man. I, I played with the money, you know, so I, you know what I'm saying, that's part of the game. I can't, I can't try to retaliate or do nothing because I bought it on myself, man. I got, I got to take, I got to take it, man, because I was wrong, you know. Which all is an excuse because you know you don't really want no smoke. You know what I'm saying? I don't care if I'm wrong or right. You punch me in my mouth, man. <laughs> yeah, all right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No sir, be Bob. Nah, I ain't. Nah, I ain't going for it. So you know, but that's the excuse he made. But then again, when you turn around and look at Outlaw, the reason why Outlaw used to call him his pops and the reason why him and Outlaw was so cool because Outlaw got the same type of larceny. Just in a younger age, he do the same exact thing. He lived just like Cracker Red. Just like him. Besides for the part probably about with, 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 with the peoples and stuff, but other than that, he do the same thing. Scam and scheme and larceny and flim flammery. It's called all day just to get high. Put his life on the line many, many times just to get high. You know what I'm saying? In fact, right before I left too, now he did that to crack a red. And then about 10 months, 11 months later, he borrowed some stuff from this young dude in there, young big old scrapping dude, and can't pay him. And the dude keep on saying, you better get this money. I'm telling you, I ain't playing with you. And the dude, a gang member. You know what I'm saying? He ain't had the money. Store day. Went up there and, and, and punished him. Went right up in the cell and beat him down. You know what I'm saying? And that made the dude feel, you know, even more emboldened than he, than he was now because he done beat up up, up Outlaw because Outlaw considered the old head. Outlaw, you know, considered he done supposed to have poked the dude a few times or poked a couple of dudes, but it won't never nobody have no significance. But just that you do that and then you've been locked up over 20 years, dude's going to, yeah, you know, look at you with a little caution. So... For him to let the young boy come up there and just beat him like that, you know, had him walk around, swole up and all that, and beat him, and the young boy walking around bragging, and he's still in the block, and Outlaw don't take no retribution, don't try to get him back, then the young boy, like, he done boot, boost up his uh, ego. He done boost up his reputation to the point where he almost wanted to try somebody that would have sewn up, uh, uh, sent him to the upper room, and that would be yours truly. <laughs> yeah, that was the same dude. Did I told y'all that I had the little thing about about the, the passing out the trays and try to get loud with me because he was just coming off that outlaw win, so he feeling himself like he nah, bro, <laughs> nice try, wrong guy, and I'll be the first one to tell you I'm glad he didn't you know uh, uh, keep pushing what he was pushing because he was gonna yeah he was gonna have a a, 
a very, very, very uh, a bad outcome with that situation, you know. But these are the things that you got to deal with in prison. You see what I'm saying? And then dudes know I was trying to get out. So I'm like, you know, uh, you get a good old reputation off of me, you know what I'm saying? If you can get away with it, you know what I'm saying? Which I don't I don't think that's going to be possible. But if you can get away with it, you you, you know, you're going to get some good old points. If you say, oh, I done beat up bang I nah. Nah, that's not going to be able to happen. You know what I'm saying? But he did it to Outlaw. But that Outlaw had did it to Cracker Red. And dudes was looking at him, man, why you do that to Cracker Red, man? Y'all supposed to be cool. No, man, he ain't had no business. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's rules, man. It's principles. When he turned around and break every rule and every principle himself, you know what I'm saying? I didn't even like what he did to him because I felt like it was he vantage taking. He trying to keep the young boys off of him by doing something to somebody older. But that somebody older is supposed to be somebody that you supposed to be cool with. But you figure you can whoop him. You should have took that same energy to the young boy who took in the cell and put it on you. You understand? But he ain't want to do that. He want to do the same thing Cracker Red said. I'm going to let that go. I was wrong. You know, it's, it's over. All right, he did what he did. He ain't, you know, I ain't bleeding. He ain't kill me. He ain't stab me up or nothing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you lucky he did. Because when you play with somebody money in the penitentiary, anything can happen, man. Please believe that. Anything can happen. You can hold a dude one Oodle noodle, man. One ramen noodle, what y'all call them out here. In the prison, we call them oodle noodle. We call it a soup. You can hold them one of those and end up with one eye. <laughs> yeah, one eye. Yeah, you most definitely, you know, you lose an eye. You lose an eye for a oodle noodle in there, man, because, you know, it ain't the price, it's the principle. You know what I'm saying? That's the way they carry it in there. It's not the price, it's the principle, you know. And, man, they had a lot of little scrapes and scratches in there, man. I mean, D, D ended up getting a laundry job, and, you know, they wash everybody clothes in there. So, you know, when you get a job like that, that's a job where people can, you know, they can, they can make money because you could say, well, you're only supposed to wash a certain amount of clothes or certain um, people clothes per, per week, you know, and you can get your clothes washed extra if you pay for it. So the laundry man can make some side hustle money. So a lot of people ain't want to get their clothes to D because, you know, because of D status or whatnot, being a homosexual. So they want to try to go back there and wash their own clothes, you know, which is a no-no for real, for real. But dudes do it. But not why D got the job because D going to go tell it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? D is going to go tell the police. So that's going to make some dudes want to put hands on D because you snitching. That's going to make Cracker Red come out and be like, hold on, hold on, man. You can't put your hands on the people, man. Man, man, F that B, man. They back there snitching and stuff, man. No, no, man. So all of that was going on. I mean, he he just stayed in the line of fire, man. They stayed in the line of fire, man, because, in my opinion, because you coming from that skull duggery. You know what I'm saying? That's your pedigree. That's your foundation. You ain't coming correct, so it ain't nothing correct coming at you. You understand me? So they they stayed and stuff, but D was known to go tell them people, you know what I'm saying? And let you know they gonna go tell the people. You get to argue with D today, or you threaten D today, I can or oh, you can almost guarantee that the police coming to your door the next day or either that night. You know what I'm saying? But they gonna say they ain't told nothing. Well what what they coming at me for then? <laughs> you said something. I ain't had no beef or argue with nobody but you, and then all of a sudden the police come. So D was known to be an informant with the police, and you know, Cracker Red is guilty by association for dealing with them. So they just had a bunch, a bunch of, you know, lossing it all around their whole life, man. It's called Duggery, Tom Foolery. You know, they had it, you know what I'm saying? And he chose to live like that. And Cracker Red is 60, 60 some years old, man. 60 some years old. And I will say this though, for him to be 60 some years old, and even though he was small frame and statue, man, he was in good shape to be 60 some years old. Cause Cracker Red can bounce around and move around and give the illusion that he that he knows something. <laughs> he don't know nothing. <laughs> he don't know nothing. Zero. He, oh yeah. Oh, don't get it twisted now. I can rumble too. And I rumble now, yeah. Yeah, yeah, don't think because I'm an old man. <laughs> nah, he don't do nothing. <laughs> he don't do that. You know, somebody smack fire for me. Okay, all right. All right, you got that. You got that. And, and then the best he going to do is go in the cell, come out later on, walk around, act like he got something on him, which can get you killed. Because you can scare a dude into killing you in the penitentiary. 
You know what I'm saying? I know that for a fact because I'm one of them. <laughs> I'm one of them. If you walk around and act like you got something and you got bad intentions for me, I'm not going to wait around and see if you're telling the truth or not. You know, that may be, you know, to my detriment. You know, so yeah, you 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 definitely get scared of somebody into killing you in penitentiary. And it seems like he would know these things, he would know these lessons, but that's the way he moved, that's the way he operated, man. And um, it's that skull duggery lifestyle, man, and uh he got it, you know what I'm saying? And um the only thing I can do is pray for him, man, cause you know, and I know what all y'all just heard, I know it sounds crazy, but I'm telling you, he not really at heart a bad dude he just do a lot of foolishness that he he in a rut he can't get out of it this is the way he live he can't change his mindset but when you sit down and talk to him man he ain't he ain't no bad cat you know what i'm saying but he will sit there and talk to you and just laugh and kiki and ha ha and all the time he just want to shot a coffee um let me shot that coffee man i know you got shot that coffee up there just like my old seller man Man, Cracker Red, you talking to me all the time just because you want some coffee. Because he knows sports, too. He like to talk sports a lot. But then he'll turn around. He wants some coffee. Man, I got a bag coming. I got a bag coming from across the yard. You know, it'll be over here tomorrow. Somebody send me a couple of bags. It don't never get there. <laughs> it don't never get there. Cracker Red, let me get them two shots of coffee back I gave. Man, you know that dude ain't even never send them bags. Man, I'm still trying to get them. You know what I'm saying? This, this, this is him, man. This is him. And you got to know this when you're dealing with him or either you're going to get highly upset. But this is Cracker Red, man, you know. But uh, wherever he at, man, I hope he doing well, man. I hope he ain't, you know, you know, Cracker Red might be pushing up on 70 now, man. So hopefully he done got out of the penitentiary, man, got his life together, man, and uh, trying to live out here, live free, man, and enjoy some of his life, man, with whatever life he got left, man. But... Yeah, man, that's Cracker, Cracker Red, man, in the Skullduggery lifestyle, man. He 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 lived it to the fullest, man. You know, and um, he's been lucky. Trust me, he's been lucky. He's been blessed. You know, he may have took a couple of bumps and bruises along the way, but at the same time, a lot of dudes got killed for some of the things he do. A lot of dudes got killed for some of the uh, the, the tricks he done pulled and got away with. So he, he's lucky and he's blessed. You know what I'm saying? Believe that. But, um... Yeah, so I wanted to tell y'all that because I brought his name up there and y'all got down on me in the comments. So I had to go ahead on and let y'all uh, go ahead on and let y'all know what was going on about that man, Cracker Red man. But salute to him, man. And hopefully he, uh, you know, he he healthy and um, got his mind right, man. You know, uh, in the meantime, in between time, man, I appreciate y'all. I'll be right back at y'all in a minute, man. I appreciate the. Uh, the good looks, man. I appreciate all the love y'all showed me for the Vlad interview. All the love y'all been showing me lately in the comments. I love the comments. Talk to me. I talk back. You understand me? Hit me in the comments, man. That's where you can reach me at. Talk to me. I talk back. You heard me? And um, came up with an idea, man. I don't know if I'm going to do it. It depends on y'all. Y'all hit me in the comments and let me know, man. I'm, I'm, I'm just thinking about this merch while I'm still waiting to get this distributor thing going on. I still want to put out some of this merch. So what I'm thinking about doing is putting out a, a hoodie and a hat because it's wintertime coming. A hoodie and a hat, man. Either beware of the Bethlehem or either duck them hooks. But I'm going to put out 50 exclusive hat hoodie matchups. You know, one or the other. And um, I'm going to take pre-orders, man. So the first 50, they, they do the pre-orders uh, and we can get them done. I'm going to send them out, man, so y'all will have something exclusive, you know, to represent that TBP. You understand me? So um, I'm going to do that. I'm thinking about doing it, man. Let me see in the comments what the uh, what the uh, 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 reaction is to that or if there's a market out there for it. If it is, man, I want y'all to have it because I want y'all to walk around with that TBP proudly. And I want y'all to represent, man, because uh, we on the move. In 2023, we're not going to be playing with them. We're trying to get at them all. You understand me? So, y'all let me know in the comments. Y'all hit me, talk to me, man. I talk back. In the meantime, y'all be safe, be smart, make good decisions, man. We out here. Boom, 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 boom. Duck them hooks, baby. They out there everywhere. Boom. The bank is special. Yeah, pure delicious. Pure delicious. coming out.
out here after 30 years, yeah, I ain't got nothing, but I'm gonna have something because I'm rich in personality, you know, and uh, I'm rich in love, my family love me, and that really, that's, that's really the, all that counts.